What's up, YouTube? Off the window, back with another weekly video. Quick question. Why do you have to have a lens to see a patient's retina with the indirect? Why can't you see a patient's retina with the indirect, you know, without the lens? Why do you have to have the lens? I mean, they're dilated. You've got a light source. You should, just, should see uh, the fundus, right? But you can't. Why is that? If you don't know the answer to that question, stay tuned for the full length of the video. It'll probably be more than five minutes, but hang in there with me. I want to lay it out for you nicely, and it's actually useful. It's something that's that's practical, um, make you a better ophthalmologist. So, uh, well, there's two conditions. I'll go get right to it. Well, the, the answer is actually you can, okay, but there's, but there's two conditions. Number one, you have to take out the cheaters. Uh, most uh, indirects have little plus two lenses built into them because they're assuming you're going to look at an image, an aerial image that's relatively close and so that things are comfortable. Plus most of your attendings are presbyopic, okay? But as residents, we don't need those. You can pop those right out for this, for if you, if you want to try this at home or in clinic. Um, you know, and, and so let me talk about that first. Let me back up for a second. If you imagine uh, an eye, here's, we'll make my hand an eye and this is the retina. The and this is an emetropic patient. Let's make this their lens system, okay? The, the light rays that reflect off the retina are gonna be diverging. They're gonna hit the converging lens system of the, of the patient's eye, and the, which is gonna converge those diverging rays. And if they're emetropic, they're gonna be, they're gonna exit in parallel, okay? And then they're gonna hit the plus two cheaters in the indirect and be converging. By the time they hit your eye, they'll be converging. And your eye can't diverge the lens. Okay. And now, if you're farsighted, it'll work out. But for, if you're emetropic, you're not going to be able to undo that convergence. Your eye, the our eyes only converge. Okay. So uh, it's going to be blurry. It's like wearing some reading glasses and going for a stroll in the park. Everything's blurry. Or if you're like me, you wear the indirect. You're walking through the hospital. You look down the hallway. Everything's blurry. People are blurry. You're bumping into people. Um, so. You can pop those out. That's condition number one. Condition number, and then once you pop those out, you essentially have a direct ophthalmoscope, by the way. And what do you do with that? Leads me to condition two. What do you have to do with a direct? Is you got to get close. Do you remember those awkward med school days where you're kissing somebody's cheek, bumping noses uh, to look at uh, to get a, a, a view of the fundus? Um, so and that's what I call the optical peephole effect. Just like a regular peephole. This is not a real people. I know what a real people is, but just bear with me. Just like a little hole here that you have to peep. You can't see anything from a distance, but you get close and then voila, you got an image. You can still see an image here. There's still an image in that little bitty hole of this retina, okay? But it's not useful unless you get close. This little peephole effect, this little peephole effect is, is, is also um, what happens with the with with the converging lens when you when you hold it at its focal distance away from the object. Okay, so it's sort of like the same thing here. I'm replacing that paper peephole or pinhole. I guess pinhole would be a more useful term for opto people, but I like peephole. Anyways, this has this this a, a similar pinhole or peephole effect. Okay. Um, when it's held at its focal distance. If you hold it here, no big deal. You can see me, you see the, the retina, the image is clear, but when I bring it down to one over, this is a 20 diopter lens, one over 20 meters away from the object, I don't know, somewhere around here, then the image is no longer useful. Now it's still parallel light rays that are coming out, but you're just catching a snippet of it. See these parallel, these, so again, the light rays are hitting the, reflecting off the retina, going, diverging, hitting the converging lens, bring, which brings them down into parallel. And then they're going off never to make an image again, unless your pupil catches it. Your lens um, system will converge it. And then the light rays will intersect on your retina, forming an image in your brain. But these parallel light rays, just like with this thing, the the light the the pinhole effect or peephole effect, the the it, uh, this point down below is going to go up through the people pinhole pin, peephole whatever and go up over your your pupil or up over the aperture on this little 
cell phone thing here, okay? Or it's gonna, from, from up above, it's gonna go down below, and from the right, left, and left, right. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to catch to these parallel light rays, because they're not forming an aerial image. It's just parallel going off in, in different directions through the, essentially the middle of the lens. So you have to get close, and look at that. Isn't that cool? No, un, let's see, let's get you back up. That looks about right. This unuseful image. And then boom, beautiful image. Pinhole people effect, optical pinhole people effect, okay. Now, sure, you can take out the plus two lenses and get awkwardly close. And then you get a good image of the patient if they're cycloplegic and they're emetropic. But you can also just stand at arm's length and see the fundus blurry, okay? And you, if you know, if you see a white lesion in the fundus, and you're trying to sort of find it, and get it centered in your, in your, when you're using the lens, you can take the lens away for a second, so you're not disoriented by the inversion, and just look, move your head around, and you'll be able to see it. And once you see it, then boom, then pop the lens over, and it'll be crisp. It'll be right in the middle. So that's where this comes into practical use. Okay, but here's our, if you don't wanna, you know, get awkwardly close to the patient, then you'll do what we always already do, and you use, a, you do, you use another converging lens. And let me show you that. Boom. How cool is that? Unuseful image, incredibly useful image. And what am I doing here? I'm just holding one in front of the other, but what's going on? So we have, Again, light rays diverging off the uh, fundus, going through the, uh, this is, in, in my scenario, this is the um, lens system of the patient's eye, okay? And then exiting their eyeball in parallel, you're, instead of catching it with your own pupil by getting close, remember that's not real practical, you're catching those rogue parallel light rays with a separate co converging lens that is not your own eyeballs lens. And instead of converging them onto your retina now, you're converging them into an aerial plane, making an aerial image. And then you're just looking at that aerial image. And it's different, you know, it's, sm it's smaller, but, but that's okay, we want it to be smaller. Because the natural eye, with, an, with a direct ophthalmoscope, it's 15X, 60 times a quarter, 15X, that's too big. So it's smaller, that's good. And then also, it's inverted. Ah, that's not so good, but you get used to it. That's what residency is about. Um, and so, I want to show you that IRL. If you're an opto resident, then you've probably noticed I've got some anisocoria going on. What's your differential? Quick. No, it's not Horner's. It's not an aneurysm. It's always pharmacologic. All right, let's check this out. All right, what have we got here? Well, this scenario would be, you've got the indirect, on, the indirect on your head, there's no lens at the moment, you're looking at the dilated, emetropic patient, and what do you see? Well, you see the red reflex, that's useful. But of course, you can't do a dilated exam. Oh, what is that? You notice some area of retinal yellowing, and you wanna go check that out. Well, what do you, what do, you do? Well, you could pull up your 20 diopter exam uh, lens like any normal resident, or if you're a nerd, you might want to just take a sneak peek by getting close because you're aware of the optical peephole pinhole effect, okay? And what do you notice as we get close? Well, if I can get the settings correct, you, you'll see that that area of retinal whitening, or yellowing rather, is actually a nerve. And you can see bits and pieces of it here as I turn the light down. Yeah, there it is. You can see the borders. You can see the, the vessels going over. You can tell it's not swollen. There's no obvious cupping. There's no heme. Now it's not the best demonstration just because the light source on the cell phone is not super close to the camera. It's not as close as an indirect, a direct ophthalmoscope, by the way. So, but you get the point. Out here, you see a 
um, a red reflex, a yellow, you see something yellow, then you can pull up your 20 and really have it centered. Because sometimes the inverted image is, is disorienting. Um, so that's a demonstration of the people. You can't see it out here, but you could see it up close. The alternative is to catch that, uh, catch those rogue diverging or those rogue parallel uh, light rays with a separate converging lens that is not your own eyeball, but rather your your handy dandy twenty, and then just use this inverted smaller aerial image, and look at that. That's a beauty. Let's see if I can get it just right for y'all. So cool. Now you know why you can't see the fundus with the indirect without the aid of a 20 diopter converging lens. And what's the answer? Well, the answer is you actually can, if so long as you take out the plus two cheaters and you get real close. Let's just look at that one more time. This takes some practice, particularly to do it on yourself, but you learn how to do it on a patient relatively quick. Just try to do it each and every time you see somebody in the ER and you'll get the hand, uh, you get a handle on it in no time and be sending pictures to your seniors and your attendings and it's, it's huge. Oh, doctor, it's so bright. It's not that bright. <laughs>